What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. All you new subscribers, I'm Barbas. So, if you saw the last episode, we got the block guard in, we honed out the cylinders, and everything is completely clean, ready to go. What I'm gonna do right now is install my piston rings, and basically I'm gonna do this the old school way, the way how I was taught. Every build is different, so you have to determine what your ring gap is going to be yourself. This is a stock bore. So I'm going to go with the first piston ring at 22, which is the top ring. Then the second ring, I'm going to go either 23, 24, or 25. I'm not sure yet. So you guys already know that this is a turbo build. So, the bigger the gap, the better it is for me because of the fact that under boost, when all that heat is going on, that's when everything starts to expand. You don't want those rings to touch, otherwise, that'll be the end of that. You don't want to go too big because otherwise you start burning oil. That's the reason why I'm debating for my second ring, either 23, 24, or 25. I might end up somewhere between 23 and 24, but I also want to send it. So maybe I'll end up with 25. I'm not sure yet. All right, so I told you guys I'm old school. So the first thing we're going to do, let's get this nice and straight. Right there. We're going to take our marker. And I'm going to mark this. This is the front of the engine block. You can see right there, D16A. I'm going to take the marker. And I'm just going to do right here a little marking. One, two, three, four. You guys can see I lined up my pistons on a little table right here. Got some assembly lube. And we're gonna take the marker again. And we are gonna mark these pistons on the top right here. Don't worry, this will completely burn off. As you can see also, the arrow, I have all the arrows, and they're all pointed that way. The reason for that is that they are going to face the flywheel. They're not going to face, on the original setup, the arrows face this way towards the timing, the timing gear. You don't want it to face towards the timing gear because of the fact that this is all backwards, these ports. They look like they're all the same, but they're not. If you take some measurements of them, they're not. They're not the same, so you gotta put them the correct way. So with that being said, we know this is one, two, three, four. We're gonna go ahead and finally mark them. One, two, three, four. When I do the measurements, the reason for the writing is because when I take the measurements in here, I want to do one, 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 one. And then I'm going to do uh, the second piston ring and it's going to be two, 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 two. I don't want to do it. I know that there's videos out there where they do, they're doing one piston and then they do the first ring, their second ring the oil control ring and the next oil control ring. Well, for all you know, 
these cylinders could be different than this cylinder. So you want to do all the rings that belong in this cylinder in this cylinder. That way it all matches your piston. And then you go to your second piston and you do it all. You go to your third piston and you do it all. So I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but you want to do all the rings that belong in that cylinder. You want to do them all in that cylinder, basically. Like I was saying before, the arrows face the flywheel. And the reason for that is because these ports, like I was telling you how they're a little bit bigger, these are your intake ports. So when it's sitting on the motor, these are your intake and these are your exhaust ports. If you put it backwards, the correct way, how you would do it OEM with the arrows facing the timing, these ports, you would basically choke out your engine because the ports are backwards. So that's the reason why you got to put these facing the flywheel because of these ports right here. So let's go ahead and put our ring in here, the first ring, and figure out my gaps. All right, so these are the rings that I got. Here's the part number in case anybody needs it. And basically they're labeled. First, second, and your oil control rings. So we're gonna go ahead and put our first rings in there. All right, so here's the rings. Um, these rings, they don't have any markings on one side. They do have a marking on this side. It's got a small little N right here. So I'm guessing that's for north, for up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this ring in. I did lube all this up. Don't think that I'm just putting it in there like that. So you just make sure that the, the end is up on all of them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my pistons. It does not matter which piston it is. So this is number one. I'm gonna take my first piston and I'm gonna use it to push that ring down very gently. I'm only gonna go about this much, this much. I'm gonna do that to all of them. Now that I did that, We're gonna, I don't know if you guys can see that little gap that's right there. This little gap. We're gonna measure that gap. That gap's in all of them. So I got this. And this is what we're gonna use to measure that ring gap. I told you guys that on my first ring, I wanted to end up around 22. That's nowhere near it. Let's see what it measures. Let's try the 18. Let's try 15. It's almost there. Let's 
Looks like the 12 goes in. That's a big step from 12 to 22. I'm gonna check all these other ones real quick. This one's a little bit tighter. This one's more on the on the looser side. This one's pretty tight. And this one's pretty tight. So this is what I meant by that every cylinder is always a little bit different. So that's my measurement right there that it has. I'm going to go ahead, pull the ring out, file it down a little bit, put it back and check it. All I have is this file, so this is what I'm going to be using. I'm just going to go a few times and then I'm going to check it. And I'm only going to do it on one side, I'm not going to do it on both sides. So I'm going to use a side that has the N for north, so I know that's a side that I'm filing. I'm going to check it and see what it measures right now. Just that little bit that I did completely changed it it looks like the 15 goes in there now let me try the 16 16 goes in there Seventeen. I kind of have to force it in slightly. So you see how fast these things get sanded. So I'm just going to pull it out and do it one more time. We're going to do it on the side like I told you, the same side with the end. We're gonna check it. So the first ring is done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these rings. All right, so the first rings are done. I wanna let you guys know that I cheated and I used the grinder that's under there. It was taking a little bit too long with the other file. I just went slowly. And the first set of rings is done so this is the box where my pistons came in i'm gonna go ahead and just mark this one two three four i'm gonna pull these rings out one two three and four so now we could do our second ring And same thing for these, they have a little N right there. And that's gonna go facing north. All right, so I got the second rings completely gapped. I decided to go with 0 0.025. And the reason for that, cause you guys already know, this is gonna be high boost. It's not a daily. We just want to make power, a lot of power. The last thing we have here is the oil control rings. So it's four of these.
And there should be eight of these here. Yep, there's eight of them. So then this, some of them will go on top and the other ones will go on the bottom. And these are also marked. This should be marked. And they should actually have like a small little groove on them, which is what scrapes the oil down and what scrapes the oil up. So let me take a look at these and we'll start to assemble these onto the pistons. All right, so I was trying to find which side goes up and which side goes down on these. And both of the sides actually look the same. I could not tell the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling these. So this is what it should look like. I got one of the openings from the bottom on this side and the other opening on this side. 180 degrees away from each other so now i'm going to do the same thing to the other three pistons i'm going to throw the camera on the charger i'm going to get some lunch get some food in me and i will continue recording in two seconds all right so today is a different day i got back pretty late from my lunch it was already dark and as you can see, this room doesn't have a lot of lighting, so I couldn't continue recording. So we got our oil control rings in on all of these. So now we're ready for our second ring. That's gonna drop right into this groove right here, into the middle groove. So I'm going to throw some gloves on and I will pull those rings out that have been sitting in there and place them on the piston. Alright, so this one came out of number one. Of course, we're going to put it in number one over here. So here it is. It's on. My oil control ring, the top of the ring is right here where the opening is. I don't know if you can see that. So what I'm going to do is put this opening on this side over here, like right there. And now I'm going to take the first ring that I have sitting in that box right here. And I am going to put it on the opposite side of, of this opening. And remember that these rings have that little mark on here. The little N. So just make sure that you put that N facing up each time. So all these rings are ready to go. So now I'm going to do the same thing for number two, number three, and number four. All right, so all the rings are in. We are now ready to assemble the rods onto the piston. So for the rods, these are the ones that I got from Speed Factory. They are covered in, uh, let me see. I got one that I opened up. They're covered in some kind of a grease. I don't know what it is. I think I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner. Get them um, nice and clean. Get that grease off, that whatever's on there. And then I'm gonna bring them back inside. And we can start assembling them. All right, so it's sprinkling outside again. I brought everything to the shed over here. And I got my brake cleaner. I got these guys right here. So basically I'm gonna set it up right here, spray some brake cleaner, get it cleaned off, and put it back in the box. So that's the plan right now.
So it has like some kind of a lube on there. Maybe assembly lube. But whatever it is, I don't want it. No thank you. I have my own. All right, so I got them all cleaned up right now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my marker again and basically the side that doesn't have anything, this side has numbers. So you can see all the numbers are different. I don't know if there's enough lighting in there. Like this one's 727, 312, 756 and 153 so basically you guys don't want to get if you guys take this off right here you guys don't want to mix it up with a different rod because this one belongs to this one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it around to the side that doesn't have any markings and I'm using a number them with the marker and like I said before, this is the way how I was taught, and this is the way how I'm gonna do it. So you take your marker, you go one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. That's all you do with that. So we got these little C-clips. Those little C-clips drop in here. So you can see there's a little groove, little notch right here. And that's where the little clip drops into. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop one clip of these into each one of these only on one side. I'm going to do the left side of it. Left, left, left. So I'm going to do that right now. Alright, so there it is. It's inside the little groove. Let me show you guys the other side. There's like a little tiny groove. And that's where it goes. I was using this tool right here. To get that little clip in all right so what I want to do is separate this guy from this guy but it's on there pretty tight so the easiest way to do this is to take your bolt put it in take your other bolt put it in about that far and then you take your mallet, you hold it like this, and you take your mallet and you tap that side, and you tap this side, and you tap that side, and you tap this side, until this separates. It's kind of hard to demonstrate holding the camera, but it should look something like this once it separates. And remember, you mark this, so this is number three and three. So, you go ahead, You separate this guy, drop it in here, and now you're ready for the next one. Just do this to all of these. Now would be the right time to do this, because later you're not gonna be able to. All right, so right now, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take the pin, we're gonna take this one, because this one's the first one on the right, so, we're going to open up the pin and get it out. We're going to take our number one, put it right here. We're going to take the rod that we marked number one. And this little notch that you guys see right here, this is going to face the exhaust side. We know that on here, these ports are bigger, so that's the intake. 
and these ports that are smaller are the exhaust and what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this guy around and we are gonna install this guy right here is where it needs to end up so let's go ahead and get our assembly lube from Lucas I'm gonna put this guy through here. This guy right here. Now we're gonna push the pin all the way through. pins all the way in there and then we're gonna take our little clip that's right here this clip is not rounded on any side this clip is flat on both sides so the side does not matter how it goes on there so I'm gonna go ahead and use my tool again And there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is just wipe off any extra that's like right there on the sides. Clean it up with the paper towel and I will continue to do this to all the other ones. All right, so I got them all assembled. I want you guys to look at the difference from the stock piston. Let me put it up here. So look at that difference. The stock to the aftermarket one.
You can see how much deeper this one is. All right, so before we drop these pistons in, I wanna go ahead and we are gonna plastic gauge our main bearings. So what I'm gonna do is pull the pin on this, flip this guy around upside down. Put the pin back in. And basically, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the crankshaft. I'm gonna clean it down with some brake cleaner. I'm gonna put my bearings in. We're gonna use some of this plastic gauge and we are gonna measure the clearances right now. All right, so this is what the crankshaft looks like. I don't know if you guys remember, I had wrapped it with this bag. So now what I'm gonna do is clean it off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this out. Just in case any little tiny little dust particles got in there. I am gonna grab my bearings. Here's the part number, if anybody needs it. These are king bearings. And we are gonna go ahead and put these right here in each one of these little slots so you can see it's got a little notch right there and these have a little notch on here so basically you just want to go like this slide them into place you don't want any lube under here The easiest way that I found to put these on is just to go like right there and then push it from down here up. It's nice and even on both sides. I'm not gonna put any lube on here yet, but we are gonna lube all of these up. We are, are gonna put some of this. So basically, our plastic gauge. We're gonna take a small little chunk of it and just set it right across right here. I am going to do that for all of them.
and when we put the crankshaft in there make sure you do not spin that crankshaft make sure that crankshaft does not move at all since you don't have any lube in here you don't want that crankshaft to spin on you I'm gonna put my thrust washers in the groove goes towards the outside the flat side goes towards the wall This is the part number for the thrust washers, if anybody's wondering. All right, so the crankshaft is in. Let me show you the clearances. It's right here. The main is the top number. And the rod bearing is the no number below it. So I got the other bearings installed over here the same way that they install over there they install over here and all I'm gonna do is place this guy back in there nice and gently I don't want anything to be moving around That way nothing gets scratched up. Alright, so I took a bag and I wrapped it in my mallet. Because of the fact that my mallet is starting to like throw little crumbs. So I used my mallet afterwards and I pounded everything down lightly to make sure that it was completely um, down. So now what I'm going to do is I got my bolts over there they're nice and clean the bolts are nice and clean I already threw them up here um, these two in the middle are longer than these as you can see it's a little bit longer just remember that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my impact to just push these down just a little bit not all the way down, just almost where it's at the bottom. All right, so the sequence for torquing this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the impact, like I told you, lower it down, and then I'm gonna torque it down. And then for the torque, there's uh let me show you guys there's an app and it's called Honda Base and then you choose the engine D series you choose whichever D16 you have you click on one of these doesn't matter which one well it does matter but find the one that that you guys have this is the d16y8 and it gives you like all the specs on it what computer piston red line if it has vtech if it doesn't when vtech kicks in it's got a lot of information on this app it's got ecu pinouts uh bearing thickness chart and then it's got torque And then it tells you what everything needs to be torqued to as long as it's completely stock bolts that are not an ARP then you could use this chart again the name of this 
is right there and it's a pretty handy app to have. So I'm gonna torque this down to 18 pounds. Once I get everything torqued down to 18, I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna torque everything to 38. Okay guys, so I got everything torqued down. Um, the torque sequence that I gave you before is actually wrong. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you jump over eight, nine, and ten. So one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we're gonna go ahead and take these bolts off. And basically now we are going to check our clearance. Everything's out. So now you take your little ruler thing and you line these up with the little marking that was made right here. So then you can see your little mark right here. There's a mark right there, there's a mark right there. You take your little ruler that that one more like that one right there so it looks like it's within spec right now so everything looks pretty good that means we can continue with the assembly so I still have some plastic gauge left so if anybody needs this plastic gauge and you've gotten this far in the video comment below and I'm gonna wait about two days from when this video is posted and just let me know below and I'll make a small little raffle for the rest of this stuff and I'll send it out to you only in the US all right so now that i checked everything just grab a little rag clean everything off and now you're truly ready for assembly all right so now that we got everything i'm checking all my bearings everything's nice and clean these bearings are all in position they did not move but i'm double checking everything what we want to do now is grab the assembly lube and lube all this up like that
Take your finger. Make sure it's completely looped up. Just like this. You don't want any kind of scratches or anything like that. So right there, it looks like it's all lubed up. All right, take your assembly lube, put a little bit in the back of your thrust washer. Remember, this is the side that's gonna be out, like when you put it in there. The flat side is gonna go up against this wall right here. So just put a little bit in the back side of it so it helps it stick. That's plenty right there. That way it just like holds in there. This is the other thrust washer. The only reason I do this, like I said, is just so it sticks on there. Slider back and forth. Now you take your lube, you put a little bit on this side. Same thing on the other one. Use your finger. All right, let's go ahead and drop the crankshaft back in there. All right, I just placed the crankshaft and I made sure that these thrust washers didn't move on me. They're still in there. If you try to spin this, these thrust washers will try like to spin out. So don't spin this around yet until you have the other half on there. So now we're gonna put the other half, which is the girdle. It's right here. All the bearings are in. I'm gonna double check them, make sure that they're seated properly. And then I am gonna lube them up. Grab the assembly lube once more again. You want to make sure that these are nice and lubed up, otherwise, scratches. And that's the last thing you want, like I said before. So before I flip that guy over on here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lube on this right here. And I'm gonna run my finger on it and then I can put the girdle on there all right so now I'm gonna put the girdle back on there this is what this looks like I'm gonna flip this guy over very gently very slowly lines up perfect all right so now we can take all our bolts again and drop them in there. Remember the two longer ones go in the middle. All the other ones 
on the other spots. So I'm going to go ahead and torque this down to 18 on the first pass and then on the second to 38. So it's completely assembled and I'm able to spin my crankshaft and it's spinning really really smooth. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and get this guy turned around because now we are ready to drop our pistons in there. Pistons and rods can finally go in. All right, so this video is a little bit long, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. And we are ready to drop these pistons in, as you guys can see. That's the next thing that's gonna go in. After that, I'm thinking maybe the oil pump, we're gonna shim it, try to get more PSI, try to get it to flow a little bit uh, better. And this is gonna be it. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Till then, stay safe, peace out. Catch you guys later.